There are some amazing fall fashion trends heading our way this year and there are some that are not so amazing and I think we need to avoid them. Hi, I'm Leone and welcome to my channel. Now you guys seem to really love my recent video on the fashion trends to look out for this coming fall. And I thought that I would create a video today on those fashion trends that you may be tempted to try, but I really think we need to avoid them. I'm gonna share why I think we need to avoid them. And as always, these particular videos do create a whole lot of controversy and debate. So tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm really happy to chat about some of these trends. Obviously you don't have to agree with me on all of these and if you're someone like Iris Apfel, you're going to take this entire video with a grain of salt, but I really just like to give my two cents worth and share a little bit of common sense and practical fashion advice so you don't waste your money on some of these trends that I really don't think are going to work for most of us. But without further ado, let's get on to these trends. Now, one of the really big fashion trends for fall 2023 is satin. Now, I can hear you already probably saying, hang on, are you gonna tell us that we can't wear satin and you're wearing a shimmery metallic shirt? Well, the reality is yes, yes, that is exactly what I'm going to say. And that is because satin is a really tricky fabric to wear. And this season, I'm seeing a lot of satin teamed with another key trend for fall, and that is feathers. And the problem that I have with satin, so just think about it, there are going to be satin dresses on offer, blazers, shirts, skirts. The real issue that I have with satin is that it's a tricky fabric to wear well. But if you do really like this trend and like this look and love a little bit of a shiny fabric, then what I do suggest you do is spending a little bit more money on some of these pieces. The high street brands are going to do this and satin is going to be everywhere, but it won't be sewn particularly well and you'll see puckering and bad manufacturing and it's I suppose what I'm saying is that there's nowhere to hide those certain things when it comes to a fabric like satin. So if you love this look, potentially spend a little bit more and buy a piece that is a little bit better made and a slightly better quality. Um, otherwise, I think it's much easier to steer clear of a satin type fabric. There are definitely plenty of other options like the silk, the metallic silk that I'm wearing. Metallics is definitely a key look for the season, but just be careful when it comes to these satin fabrics because they do tend to look cheap really quickly. Every season there is a print that takes front and center and for fall that print is snakeskin. Now I talk a lot of bits about snakeskin on my channel here and I love snakeskin as an accessory. I'm just a little bit unsure of wearing it top to toe which is the way it is being worn this fall or certainly the way that designers showcased it on the runways. And of course we tend to take our lead from those runway shows in terms of how these pieces are being worn. So what I would suggest when it comes to snakeskin Definitely opt for accessories in this print. I've always talked about snakeskin accessories as in boots, shoes, sandals, purses, crossbody bags as being a great addition to any wardrobe. And certainly if you like this particular print, then maybe look at it as, as statement pieces that you team with other neutrals as opposed to wearing it as a full top to toe bold look. I'm sure some of you will be saying that snakeskin is a classic as in any other animal print is and I definitely agree with that. It is a classic piece but it's just the way that it's being worn this season that I think potentially runs the risk of just being a little bit too much. So go ahead and grab some of these cool snakeskin pieces. The great thing is that there'll be plenty available because it is a trending look for the season, but just tread carefully in terms of wearing it top to toe. Oh, and at this point, I'd just like to take a minute to talk about today's video partner, and that is Surfshark. Now Surfshark is a VPN and no, that's not a VPL. A VPL and a VPN are two very different things. A VPN is actually a virtual private network and it's a really cool thing to know about and have. So a VPN like Surfshark gives you the ability to create a IP address from anywhere in the world. So what that does is it means that you can access 
material that may be blocked in your country and for me that is a huge one. There are some amazing offerings on Netflix that I can't watch when I want to watch them because I live in New Zealand but if I use Surfshark I can log on, grab myself an IP address from somewhere in the States or whichever country that particular show is screening and I can access my Netflix and watch that show when I want to. I don't have to wait weeks and months for it to be available in New Zealand. That is one of the many uses of a VPN. I also use Surfshark to protect my online information. With Surfshark you only need a single account to protect your privacy, security and your identity. So companies, hackers or bots can't track you online and that's a biggie for me. With Surfshark Alert you get notified about any personal information leaks that might be happening. Surfshark automatically blocks more than a million known malicious websites, phishing methods and other threats so you can safely surf the internet whether you're at home or if you're away. Surfshark also gives me real peace of mind when I'm out and about. So if I'm surfing the net from public Wi-Fi on my phone or accessing my bank account or other real personal information on the go, it just encrypts that information and keeps it completely safe and secure. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee so if for some reason you're not happy when you have signed up then you can easily cancel your subscription and get that money back. So it is absolutely risk free. So if you'd also like to enjoy the security and peace of mind and accessibility that Surfshark offers then I've got a really great deal to share with you today. All you need to do is click the link in my description box below and that is simply Surfshark dot deals forward slash the style insider and use my code which is the style insider and that will offer you a very cool surprise deal and you'll also get three months free on top of that. So as I said I will leave a link in the description box below but Surfshark is going to give you lots of peace of mind and also give you access to Netflix and all sorts of things that you couldn't otherwise do online. So definitely go and check it out. It is linked in the description box below. And big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. Okay, oversized dressing is nothing new and we've all been seeing and most of us loving kind of the oversized blazers. I know some of you don't love that look, but what seems to be happening for fall is more of a power dressing. So some of these oversized pieces are getting the addition of 80s shoulder pads put in them. So a real oversized kind of 80s look. So instead of the pieces being sort of slouchy and oversized, they're very much structured, big power dressing kind of looks. Now, yes, this has a, a place. I truly feel that it does have a particular place in fashion. But I think we, like anything, if you go to extremes, it can tend to be a little bit too much. And certainly if you were looking at incorporating a power suit type blazer into your repertoire, I would think about proportions and just think about pairing that back with something that's a little bit more fitted on the bottom. Certainly the designers showcase these sort of power type blazers and jackets with really oversized pants and skirts as well. So I tend to think that all of this fabric and all of this structure can overpower most frames and just be a little bit too much. So oversized, yes. Power dressing, yes. But just watch your proportions. So, so tread carefully with this one and think about proportions to create a, a seamless outfit. Now this next one is an interesting one because we've all seen in the last couple of seasons that some of the jewelry is getting a little bolder, especially bolder earrings. Now I'm all here for a beautiful bold statement earring. What I have been seeing though is bold statement necklaces teamed with those bold earrings as well. And in my opinion I think it's tricky to pull this off, it's a huge statement. What I would suggest is wearing one or the other, not both together. But of course as I said earlier if you're an Iris Apfel you're going to add both and then some and that's absolutely fine. But if you're wanting a more of a timeless but fashion forward look without being too over the top, I would definitely choose one or the other. And certainly from what I'm seeing in terms of fashion forecasts, a bolder earring is where it's at. So beautiful sort of chunky and sort of organic shaped studs and hoops are where it's at. And certainly I need to update my repertoire and grab a few of those pieces. I love the fact that they are statement pieces that can finish off a very simple outfit. So just 
be a little bit cautious about doing statement on, upon statement upon statement. Maybe just choose one or the other. One of the key trends for fall was beautiful hosiery that has come back and I talked about that in a recent video. But what seems to be happening too is that hem lengths are coming up. So we're seeing more mini skirts and short shorts. Like they're almost not even shorts. It's almost a look that really is just a runway look. It's a look that's going to showcase pieces and create a little bit of a wow factor, but it's not practical and it's just a tricky trend to wear. So I've included these short, short, sh shorts, short, short, shorts, you know what I mean? These short shorts here on the list because yes, they will look amazing with the right legs and the right hosiery, but it is a tricky trend to wear and to wear well, and that's why it's on the list. Now I touched on feathers earlier, and certainly we will be seeing more feather trimmed pieces and feathery tops. And while these can look really pretty and make a, a real style statement, I do think unless you opt for a piece that's a little bit more on the luxe side of things, it can just run the risk of looking a little cheap and cheerful. And certainly, as I said earlier, when feathers are teamed with satin and it's not done well, it just can go wrong really quickly. And I also think that feathers are great for perhaps evening. I'm not thinking feather boas. I'm definitely thinking feather trim and that seems to be a really fitting way to wear feathers but from a practical point of view and trying to incorporate them into other pieces it's not an easy thing to do you definitely need to invest a bit of time to pull off this look and for that reason they're on this list now another key trend is floor length coats now I'm a little bit torn on this trend because part of me loves it but part of me loathes it and I think that there are maxi coats and then there are super maxi coats. And certainly what we saw on the runway are floor length and almost floor dragging coats, which it just isn't gonna work in the real time. I suspect that high street labels and brands are going to sort of pull that length up a little bit, which I think is needed. Yes, maxi coats are brilliant. I am a huge fan of maxi length coats, but not when they go too far where they actually skim the ground. That's not gonna work for anyone. It's almost like puddle pants where they're great, they create a really lovely look, but they're not overly practical. So just be a little bit careful, especially if you have more of a petite frame, that the maxi coats this season are potentially going to be super long. So just be mindful of that and definitely opt for a maxi coat. They are an essential piece, but just check out that length before you buy. I also touched on this earlier about the power dressing in our oversized pieces. And this is actually going to happen a lot for fall with shirts and certainly blazers. This power sort of shoulder is very much coming back. Now I personally have power shoulders without the padding. And I do think that there is a place for this. It can create a really nice silhouette and a really nice balance, especially if you're wearing chunkier boots come fall. The, the power shoulders and the padded shoulders can kind of create a really nice balance between the two. But I do think you have to be careful not to have those power shoulders arriving before you and kind of doing all the talking, essentially. And I know that this is a look that has and was huge, pardon the pun, back in the 80s. But for that reason, it is a look that potentially will date quite quickly as well. And I suspect that these power shoulders will only be here for this year, fall, winter, and no longer. So if you love this trend, maybe look for something that's more of a high street label as opposed to an investment piece because a piece like this will easily date in your wardrobe. So just proceed again with a little bit of caution when it comes to these power shoulders. Now the big boot trend that we can expect to see everywhere is over the knee wader style boots. Now, again for me, I think that this is a great look on the runway, but real way it can go real wrong real fast. So what I would suggest you looking at as 
a an option instead of these over the knee waders is something like a sock style boot. Now this particular style of boot never really dates. It kind of gives you a same look and feel. It's a an easy boot to team with shorter hemlines or even team it with maxi skirts as the weather starts to cool off. And while I do think this kind of slouchy wader style boot does have a place. I tend to think that it looks its absolute best when teamed back with a shorter mini style skirt and for that reason it's probably dare I say more of a younger trend but the sock style boot is a timeless classic and it is one that you'll be able to wear for years to come so if that is what you like when it comes to trends and fashion then I definitely go for more of a sock style boot. And last but not least and I expect that most of you probably won't be going for this look but it's on the back of transparent fabrics and mesh style fabrics that have certainly been trending for spring summer this year and that is a free the nipple look where basically you can see everything and that is okay and uh, maybe I'm getting old or just being old fashioned and there probably is a time and a place for this but on the street or every day is kind of not one of those times in my opinion. Let me know if I'm wrong and you strongly disagree or if you agree in the comments below but I'm not here for the free the nipple campaign. I don't even really want to see that walking down the street but tell me what you think about that one. Anyway that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this one and certainly if you agreed or didn't agree with any of these trends let me know in the comments below. I do love debating down there and chatting trends but if you did enjoy this one I would love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.